Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope all is well. Hope everything's doing all right. Everyone's doing all right. All right, so got all my alarms off. Okay, cool. So just uh, checking in, see what you guys have. You know, so next class, we will be taking our final. Did anybody have any questions on anything? Anybody have any questions on any problems, how things are going to be ran, anything? Everybody good? Everybody okay? Don't forget to check out, you know, your um, final exam review. Make sure you're good with that. Uh, have all your stuff already lined up so that you're not fishing through your notes or whatever calculators, whatever you need to use. Uh, make sure you have everything lined up so that, you know, you can make proper use of your time. You know, it's going to be regular class period, 9 to 11. And, you know, just have your stuff lined up, whatever websites you're going to use so you can just go through everything you need to go through during that day and uh, knock the stuff out. All right. Anybody have anything? Anybody have any questions, concerns, or comments? Um, I had a question. Um, for mm -hmm. the all for the I know for the final review, you said that you were gonna do if we did it, if we completed it, you were gonna do five points extra for um the final. Yeah, eighty five or better on it. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um. It, do we have to do all of the review, like test reviews? No, uh, whichever one uh, you do, then you will get five, you know, at 85 or better, mm -hmm. then you will get five points for that respective one. So, uh, you know, I'll just add it to that test. Okay. Yeah, but Thank you don't you. have to do, yeah, you're right. You don't have to do all of them to get five points. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody put a question in the chat. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Oh, I'm in the wrong class. I was going to say, where did it go? Okay, give me a second, guys. I thought I was in the right class. And you said we have to stay logged into Zoom um, for the duration of the final exam. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you would enable your camera. Um, you would uh, show your ID to the camera. Uh, and then because, you know, for some of you, I haven't seen seen you, period. You know what I mean? The whole semester, you know, and that's fine. Uh, but yeah, so on that day, you would enable your camera, show your ID to the camera. And then um, Leave your Zoom, leave, stay connected to Zoom, but then you can go to uh, my math lab and log on and then use the password that I give you in order to take your test. Why is this not showing up like I need to? Okay, there we go. All right. All right, so is this the question you asked about 6.2 number 12? Make sure we're good before I start doing it. You can just answer in the chat. All right, cool. All right, so taking a picture of it, so I have to keep going back and forth with information. All right, so according to a website, the mean weight of an adult member of a particular breed, dogs of 100, 52 pounds. 
some of the distribution of weights is normal, normal distribution with a standard deviation of 12 pounds. Find the standard score, which is your Z score uh, associated with the weight of 176 pounds. So let me do it like this. This is A, and they give us X is 176. So if you want to find your Z-score, Z-score is always your data value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So that ends up giving us two, but they want it uh, in two decimal places. So I'm pretty sure they want 2.00. So let me check to make sure. Okay, they accepted two. So that was fine. So two or 2.00 is fine. So according to the empirical rule, the probability that a selected dog of this breed weighs more than 176 is about, okay. So before we go to B, A, Anybody have any, I mean, before we go to B, anybody have any questions on A? No, I'm good. Right. Yep, not a problem. Use empirical rule to answer your part A. Brand the select the dog breeds weighs more than 176. So 176, now if you're talking about the empirical rule, now we could go to the Z-score chart if we wanted to, but they said use the empirical rule, so just showing you what they mean by that. Um, or the empirical rule says that if you go one standard deviation out, that's going to be 68% of your data. If you go two standard deviations out, that's going to be 95%. Ninety-five percent of your data. So that means on the outside of here is going to be um, two point five percent of your data because two point five plus two point five is five. Five plus you know going from this rationale, you know, hundred percent. So that means 2.5 has to be on both sides of your z-score. And we just said that this is two standard deviations out. That's what the z-score represents, two standard deviations. If it was 1.32, 1.32 standard deviations. So what's greater than this two standard deviations is 2.5%. So now, once again, if you were to go to the z-score chart, your z-score chart should mirror this, let me get to, where's my Z-score chart? All right, so let me see here. Just make sure that's what they want though. Yeah, so let me show you this. All right, so here it says, according to the critical windows, you click down and they give you these options. So it should be 2.5%, let's check, yeah. All right, so we were using, once again, going back, we were using our empirical rule. Empirical rule is one standard deviation out is 68% of your data. Two standard deviations out is 95% of your data. And then three standard deviations out is 99.7% of your data. So once again, we were two standard deviations out. That's what we found with the Z-score. And that means 2.5 is on this side, 2.5 is on this side. And we were talking about greater than. So that means we were just talking about 2.5 is to the right of that uh, data value that we have. All right. So I'm just right. Was that OK? Yeah. OK. I don't know. You sure about that? Sound a little sad on that one. <laughs> Let's see, next one. All right. Where do you, where hmm? do you get like minus 15 from? Minus 15? 
Uh, you, uh, you got one of my, uh, you talking right here? Is that yeah. what you're That's one standard deviation. I was just shorthanding. That's one S. Oh. So when you have your mean in the middle, uh, you have your mean in the middle. If you add a standard deviation, subtract the standard deviation, 68% of your data is going to be in between those two values. Then when you add two standard deviations, subtract two standard deviations from the mean, 98, I mean 95% of your data will be in between those two values. So that's what you're talking about. That's what the um, empirical rule means right here. So we first talked about that in chapter three. I think it was three, 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 two, one of those. But that's when we first talked about that. Um, like I said, so going one standard deviation out from your mean, that's add and subtract is 68% of your data. Going the next thing, add two standard deviations, go two standard deviations out, add and subtract is 95% of your data. Then add and subtract the standard deviation one more time to go three standard deviations will be 99.7% of your data. And so if 95, so we know that we have two stand, you know, our data value goes out two standard deviations to the right because it's a positive two. So if we know 95% of our data is in between two standard deviations and I want to know what's to the right of this value, if 95, I'm looking at it like this, 95 is right here. That means on, and it's symmetric, remember it's symmetric. That means 2.5 has to be over here and 2.5 has to be over here. If you add them together, you get 100%. You know, all of this, all of your percentages have to add together to give you 100%. So if we're talking about what's to the right of, you know, the value that has Z score is 2.00, what's to the right of it is just going to be the 2.5. So hope I said that made it able to make more sense. Hope, hope so. If not, let me yeah. know. It did. Oh. Okay, cool. All right. So it says, let me go to put see what they want for you. See, using technology probability dog selection. Using technology. Let's look at using the chart. It says use technology. But uh we didn't talk about technology. Let's see if the chart gives us a close enough value for C. So let me show you what C says for those who haven't done this problem yet. And of course, my thing is not up. All right, using technology, the probability that a selected dog of this breed weighs more than 176 pounds is. Um, so let's see if, uh, all right, we don't, you know, we never leaned on technology. If you want to, you can always Google something that will give you that using technology, but let's see if our Z-score chart will give us a close enough value. So going to the Z-score chart. Why is my stuff not this up? So we're looking at 2.0. So 2.0 is right here, zero zero is right here. So we're looking at this value, 0.9772. All right, so don't forget we're looking at greater than though, because that's what it asks for, more than. We have to do one minus 0.9772. And that is 0 0.0228, which has a percentage, 2.28%. All right. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'll show you. It says use technology probability of the dog way more than I got 2.3 because they wanted to round it to one decimal place. Always make sure you watch how many decimal places they want. And I would say it's close. All right, so using the chart was good enough. 
All right. Almost all dolls of this breed will have weights between what two values? Almost all dolls of this breed. Okay. Mm. I'll pick two. Because we could do 176. Let's do this. We do an empirical rule. So we still lean on empirical rule, I believe. Let's go out three standard deviations. So what I mean by that, you have your, like I just was mentioning, you have your mean in the middle, and then you add a standard deviation, add a standard deviation, and add a standard deviation three times. Then on the left side, you subtract a standard deviation three times. So, Our mean is 152 and 12. So we got 152 plus 12, 164, 164 plus 12, 176, and then 176 plus 12, 188. So I'm going to use that third value. 168 plus 12, 188. And then we'll do the same thing for the left side, but we're going to subtract 12. So that's 140. That's 128. All right. So let's see if those are the values that they want. Got 116, 188. Yep, that's what they want. All right. So we're leaning on the empirical rule. And remember, I said in between these two values. Questions, questions, questions. That's right. Was that all right before we go to your next one? Yeah, that's that's okay. Okay. All right. So anybody else have any questions before we go to your next question? All right. So we are looking at 7.2 now. Waiting for it to come up. All right. All right. Large collection of one digit random numbers. Yeah, about 50% odd, 50% even. Five, uh, 10 digits odd, five, even odd. Uh huh. Find a proportion of odd digits. And follow and count carefully. All right, so just be sure this is the problem you were referencing, right? Yeah, this is the problem. Okay, cool. All right, so first thing I would do is just count all of the numbers that I have all together. I got one, two, three, four, five. And so we got five, one, two, three. So it's got 30. So we got six groups of five. So we have 30 numbers all together. Matter of fact. And I probably should have labeled this one. This was number, this is 
number 12. This one is 7.2, number seven. All right. So totally, we have 30 numbers. And we want the number of odd numbers or the percentage of odd numbers. All right. So you would count the number of odd numbers. I'm thinking I'm seeing 19. Just want to be sure. Count one more time. All right. So that means the proportion of odd numbers is going to be 19 over 30. And they went around to two decimal places. So I'm writing it as a percentage. Okay, let's see how they want this answer. Okay, so 60 is 0.63 repeated, and they wanted you to write it as a percentage to two decimal places. So it's 63.33%. So I tried putting in 63 first just to make sure, but they, they didn't want that. They wanted it this way. All right. All right, there's a proportion found. So that, that represents the next one as, let me show you. So it says the next one, um, does the proportion found in A represent P hat, which is your sample proportion or the population proportion? And this was a sample, this was a random sample or a random, random collection of numbers. So that's called, that's, that's just another way of saying a sample. So that was your sample proportion, P hat. So it says find the error in the estimate between, difference between P hat and uh, P, okay? And they give you the way to calculate that P hat minus P. So P, capital P, I'm not capital P, but P without that little number over, little sign over is your population proportion. And they tell us our population proportion is 50%. If you look up at a problem, large collection of one digit random numbers should have about 50% odd, 50% even. So all we're gonna do is take 63.33 and subtract 50 from it. I don't need calculator for that. So that's gonna be 13.33. And that's all there is to that one. All right. All right, questions, anything else, anybody else? So, um, you know, while we wait and see if anybody else have anything, always feel free to email me if you have any questions that may pop up before. Um, Yep, not a problem, not a problem. Glad I could help. Um, it may pop up before uh, the actual test itself. Um, yep, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll see what I can do to help you out. If we got to call together a real quick, you know, Zoom session to make sure you're straight, then let's see if we can make that happen. Um, so anything else? Anybody else? Anybody? Hmm. So, I mean, you know, I'm not gonna hold you guys hostage. If you have something, that's great. Um, if not, you don't have to stay. 
see. Let me stop share. All right, somebody just asked for this one. Average birth weight of domestic cats, three ounces. So average is your mean. Um, assume distribution is normal, standard deviation 0.4. Find the birth weight of cats, 80th percentile. Find the birth weights of cats uh, at the 20th percentile. All right. So, so we'll have to use our Z score chart for this. Of course, if uh, you ask for this, this glazer, if, uh, if this is not the problem, of course, let me know so I can make sure I do the right problem. Okay, cool. All right, so we have the mean is three ounces. Standard deviation should be 0. 0.4 if I remember correctly. Yep. All right, so break with the cats. So we want to find the birth weights of cats at the 40th, or not 40th, 80th percentile. All right. So what we have here is the area. Let me write it like this. Area. Or percentile. Well, you can say percentage. Or in other words, this is a chart value, which is 0.80. So now what we need to do first is go to the chart and look for 0.80. Find the closest value to 0.80. And then find the Z score that corresponds to that. All right, so we're gonna go and chart value, look for the closest thing to 0 0.8 and find the z-score that corresponds to that. I keep hitting the wrong button. All right, so this 0.81. Here we have 0.7995. See, 0.80 would be in between these two values. And you see that 0.7995 is closer than 0.8023. So we wouldn't use that one. It doesn't matter if it's greater or, or smaller. We just use the one that's closest. All right, so. So that ends up being 0.84 as a z-score. So let me put this in the notes. All right, so closest value is 0.7995. We got 0 0.04, 0 0.8. Make sure my stuff is straight. 0 .8, 0 .04. All right, so questions before we go any further. All right, so if we look at our Z score formula, It's the data value minus the mean divided by standard deviation. Now, what we want is the data value. But what we have is the z-score. You know, that's what we just pulled, the 0.84. And I could have wrote that. 
z-score is 0.84. So we have the z-score, the mean, and the standard deviation. So now we can go ahead and find the value that we're missing, which is the data value. We have everything else. So what I would do is go ahead and solve this for uh, the data value. And uh, I think I gave this to you one other time, but don't matter, I'm giving it to you now. So you might wanna hold on to this relationship. Uh, you will multiply standard deviation, both sides, and then add the mean. So that is the formula you use to find the data value. It's the same formula as this was just manipulated so that your X has been solved for instead of Z. All right. So now we'll plug in all the values that we have. So your mean is three. I guess somebody was leaning on the keyboard. <laughs> In the chat, I think somebody was leaning on the keyboard. But if that's a legit question, please let me know. Uh, Z score is 0.84, standard deviation was 0.4. One back, yep, three. So it's 3.336. Okay, they wanted two decimal places. So 3.34 is the answer. So questions on the process before we look at B. Same process, but they gave us a different percentage. But just any questions on what we did right here? All right, straight. All right, so let's do it again. B, ask for the 20th percentile. Mm -hmm. So 20 percentile, that means our chart value is going to be 0.20. So it means you go into the chart, look for the closest thing to point two, and then find the z-score that corresponds. Click the wrong button. All right. All right, so looking for the closest thing to point two. I see point two zero. All right, so point two would be in between these two values. Closest thing is going to be point two zero five five. I mean not five five point two zero zero five. All right. Oh, this one ended up being negative. Eight four. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense because we're doing the twenty percentile versus the eighty. All right, so so that's what's in the chart. We got point zero four up here, negative point eight over here. So the z score is negative point eight. Four. Now to find the chart value, not the chart value, the actual data value. That's the formula I'm from right here. Plug in what we have, it should be three here, plus negative 0.84 times point, was it point zero four point four, just point four.
2.664, which would be 2.66, because they want two decimal places. All right, so that's all they wanted for that problem. Before we go to another one, questions on what we did there, make sure we're okay. Trying to get to there we go. Can I get to the other question? All right, C1, 8, 1, 11. Okay. Somebody asked for 8.1, number 11. All right, so is this the problem? This is 8.1 number 11, it's okay. Before we uh, start doing it, make sure I got the right problem. It says a mother, a teenager has her plant 25% of TJ's who drive. It's too high, and wants to test it. Okay, so to give you no hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis she posed for Polls 40 randomly select the teenagers for them report having text while driving a proportion of 0.1. So they give you that p value is 0 0.014. Explain the meaning of this value in the context of this problem. So the p value says that the true proportion of teenagers who text while driving. Yeah. Okay, it's less than, so let's write down the givens. All right, so let's look at the given so we can properly assess what we have. Because really, they went through the process for us. When we look at hypothesis testing, for the most part, She polled 40 people, P hat, X over N. She said four of them reported texting while driving. So that's four over 40. So that's how they got the point one <clears throat> for the uh, sample proportion. But of course, that is your population proportion. You know, that 25%. They found the p-value, which is 0 0.014, what was significance level? Um, 
That's what driving. Oh, okay, I guess now we need this. So let's go back to the problem. Hold on one second. There is a why is the p value of true proportion text y drive is 0.25? Then there will be a probability that one would get. Looking at trying not to get this wrong, trying to figure out which one they want. It can't be 0.1 probability. Okay, so they just want that was just a statement on the actual problem. We didn't have to do any work on it at all. I thought they gave the significance level and they didn't even give it. So this is how it would be uh, plugged in. So the p-value says that if there is a true proportion of teenagers who text while driving, uh, it's 25%. So you get that from the original percentage. And notice they, they wrote it as 0.25, not 25%. So, and if they wanted a percent, they would have a percentage on the outside of the box. So Make sure you hold true to that. They, they want you to write as 0.25. Then there is only a 0 0.014 probability. So that came from the p-value. That one would get a sample proportion of 0.1. Sample proportion, remember that was our 0.1, which is right here. I don't know if you guys can see my arrow, but um, that 0.1, which is a sample proportion, or smaller with a sample size of 40. Remember, she pulled 40 randomly selected teenagers. All right. So uh, was that okay uh, for anybody, especially for who asked about it? Yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? Anything else? Everybody good to rush straight. All right. Well, if you guys are good, um, I'm good. Did I hear somebody on mute? Parker, I'm sorry, I have one more question. I'm just trying to find it. I believe it's 15 on, yeah, it is 15 on the exam review, the final interview, okay. my last one. Mm -hmm. Oh, hear the dog in the back. <laughs> So is there review number 15? So the exam questions, are they gonna be like somewhat similar to what we have been seeing on, on this app? Yeah, just same same way that we did the uh, test reviews, and, you know, as far as our test, um, the test reviews set you up, you know, with similar problems for the test. So, yeah, yeah, very similar to how we did our regular test. All right, so number 15, pro ass people. With some, some without ATMs, stress, stress, experience stress. So it's comfortable. These three questions should not be. Okay. All right, so we have to use these chart values to find an answer, find a probability that a randomly selected person did not have a child under 18 year old, given that they said no.
on exam review. This is number 15. All right, so child under 18. I'm just kind of scribbling, but no child under 18. This is total. All right, so we're talking about frequently experiencing stress. That's what these categories is, yes or no? Frequently experience stress. All right, so find a probability that a randomly selected person did not have a child under 18 years old, given that they said no. So did not have a child, no child under 18 year old, uh, that total number is this right here. So that should be a bottle number. Well, you know what? Let's do this. Come on, come on, erase, erase, erase. All right. Let's use this as a bottom total number of people, period. And then, so we're looking at. They said, no, um, don't have a child, given that they said no. Let's see if it's this simple right here. And I need to round it to four decimal places. 320 divided by 160. Trying to see if it's that simple without me pulling in the formula. One three zero one nine. Oh, got to use the formula. Uh, okay. Go back to the notes. That's not a race. Come on, guy. Make this. All right, so we got to use the um, the conditional formula. So that formula is the probability A given that B occurs. So there's going to be a probability of A and B. Oh, let's go number. So we're looking at numbers, number A and B, and then it should be the number of B. All right, so what we're looking for My picture back. The probability that did not have a child. No child under 18. No child under 18 given they said no. All right, so we got to have no child and said no. So we we'll look at the number of those people over the number of people that said no. 
All right, so let me erase this. All right, so number of, child under, number of people that have, do not have a child under 18 and said no is 320. And then the number, total number of people that said no is 561. All right, so 320 divided by 561. My answer should be 5704. Let's see if my math lab likes that answer. Yep, so that's what it was. All right, so find a probability that randomly selected person said no, given the person did not have a child under 18. So that was, I did label that A right there. So this one is B. Well, any questions on A before we go to B? All right, so this one, we go back to it. Probably a randomly selected person said no, given that the child is not 18. So no. Then given there's no child, basically we're switching the, uh, position of what we're looking at. So person said no. And given that a person does not have a child under 18. All right, so if you said no, hold up, let me write the formula. I didn't do the formula right. So looking at the number of those who said no, and no child under 18. And that's going to be under or over um, the total number of people that didn't have a child under 18. So that top number should be the same. So if there's no and no child under 18, should be 320. And then the total number of people that said, uh, that do not have a child under 18 is 520. I think that's five, yeah. So that number should be, point six one five four. And let's see if my math lab was okay with that. Yeah. Um, group did not have a child under 18 and said no. So that should be. Okay, so the last one says, oh, I'm still on the notes. Probability a random person did not have a child. So this one was an and, not a given. It says did not. So the key word here is and, and, and you know, before it was, they were talking about giving. So it says did not have a child under 18 and said no. Well, we know that, you know, from the first two that that number is 320. But if you're just talking about the probability it's not a given statement, it's just and, then our bottom number is gonna be this 1060. So that probability, uh, I'll just write the number, would just be 320 over the 1,060. And that value was 0 0.3019. All right.
All right, questions, was that okay? Uh, yes, thank you. Could you um, post this um, lecture? Mm -hmm. to, uh, I don't know, is, is, would you be able to today or? Sure, uh, let me see, I won't be able to do it. I'll probably be able to do it because um, I have a funeral to go to. Oh. Probably <clears throat> around one or two, depends on when I get from it. And I'll make sure I post that for you. Okay, thank you so much. That would yep. be really And if you don't see it by four or five-ish, feel free to shoot me an email to remind me. I don't have a problem with that. So okay. just throwing that out there. <laughs> thank you. Not a problem. All right, anything else? Anybody else? Anybody? All right. All right. Well, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, other than that, I will see you on Thursday. All right. Everybody have a good one.